Uh, this came out of a mystery box also, a thrift store mystery box. That's where I go into the thrift store and they have boxes. And some of them will say Christmas, some will say Halloween, some say toys. Those are normally the categories. But this was in a Christmas box. And I'm like, what on earth is this? And I used Google Lens and I figured it out. They are replacement parts for the Santa Read Me a Story. And you guys, these are pretty hard to find and they sell. This sold on a seven-day auction for $24.99. The buyer was all in for $32.83. I think if I would have done a buy it now and kind of waited it out, I probably could have got $35, maybe $30 for this. But um, I was happy to see it go quickly. Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. All right, are you guys ready for some bread and butter bolos? So what do I consider bread and butter? Those are items that I sold for $35 or less that I have picked up at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales, um, YouTube, just anywhere that I can source cheap and sell for a profit. So again, everybody's definition of bread and butter is different. For my videos, it's $35 or less. So we are going to get started here. Um, the first item is actually a necklace that I got at a thrift store for $1. All right, let's get started. So the brand is Chico's and it's this chunky black and off-white necklace. I just thought it was different and, you know, it's long and beaded and I just thought it was kind of funky and would look pretty cool with maybe a off-white or a black blouse. I don't know. I don't wear tons and tons of jewelry. I actually ran over to my, um, I have jewelry that I was doing a live show. I was unboxing the other day and I'm like, oh, that'll match what I have on and I kind of need a necklace. So I threw this on really quick. Um, so yeah. All right. So anyway, that was kind of off subject. Uh, $16 I sold this for best offer and the buyer was all in for $23.25. The next item I sold is this Avon kite. Um, it is a brooch and I picked up a bunch of the Avon brooches that have the scents inside of them. Those are pretty collectible and they go for more. The scent is pretty much, you know, doesn't really have a scent anymore, but people collect them for, um, because they had them as a kid or they, you know, the memories. So nostalgia, that's the word. And this one was with that lot. So I paid 50 cents for this at a thrift store. I bought a whole bunch of them. The other ones have been going anywhere from 15 to $25 that have the, I'm trying to think of what they're called but they have the scent. If you guys have been here for a while, you have seen me share them in my videos. But anyway, this one only sold for $7.50 and the buyer was all in for $12.88. But I wanted to show you that it's just a simple plastic cheap brooch, but to somebody it meant something to them. So I'm really glad I listed it. But from 1973, and you can see it is dated and marked on the back. The next item is this Vintage Playmates, Little Playmates Space Station Blue Alien from 1984. And this little guy sold for $13.50 and the buyer paid shipping all in for $19.78. So right here is, I, I believe it's marked right there. It says Hong Kong. Um, Google Lens is how you figure out what these are because I had no idea what this was. The next item is this sweater clip and let me show you here in my hand. I really feel like when I put jewelry in my hand, you can see it better than you can on the white background. So you will see me do that a lot in my photos. I usually don't do it on the first photo, but I definitely do it in the other photos. Um, so it's a vintage collar scarf clip, gold tone beaded heart design. And I got this at a garage sale for 50 cents. I sold it for a best offer of 10 and the buyer was all in for $16.24. The next item is this vintage 1996 Hallmark Keepsake Music Ornament Peanuts. And it's got Lucy, but um, I didn't test it, you guys. You have to plug it in. Let me see here if I took a picture of the plug. I don't know that I did. 
right there. This plugs into your tree lights. And obviously when I listed it, it was not Christmas. So I did not have out my tree lights. So I, uh, I didn't test it. I just listed it as untested. I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't work, but I did not want to mislead anyone. So untested in the title. I got this out of a mystery box and I sold it on auction for $9.99 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item, <laughs> I love this one. The next item are these little flocked Easter bunnies and they've got red eyes. They're just little flocked figures. If you guys are wondering what flocked looks like, that is what it looks like. Um, there's a little close up of it. I got these at a thrift store for 25 cents, took a best offer of 12 and the buyer was all in for 2075. The next item is this little big bird. And again, major bread and butter on this one. I sold it for $6 plus shipping. The buyer was all in for 1210. I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. It's $1.79 a pound at my bins store. And I like smalls. I like them because they are easy to ship. I like them because they make people happy. This is a vintage item that somebody was looking for and I took the time to list it and now they were able to find it. Um, if you guys like Goodwill Bins videos where people dig through the bins, I've been doing a lot of those videos lately. So definitely check out my channel for those. I do keep it educational as I pick the things up. I will pop up screen shares of how I listed the items. So you will definitely learn from my videos and I do a voiceover. So I talk with you as I'm going through and kind of tell you why I pick things up and why I put things back. But anyway, this big bird, I picked him up and I was happy with that because I probably had what, maybe a quarter in him. The next item I sold is this Santa mug and it's one and a half inches big. It is just a teeny little guy. And I actually messed up and I shipped a different Christmas mug. And the person messaged me and they're like, this mug is too big. <laughs> the mug I ordered, you know, I don't remember exactly what they said, but I'm like, oh my goodness, I shipped the wrong mug. Um, but they're like, I really like this one too. Can you just, can I just buy the other one also? And I'm like, yes, score. So um, that was really nice of them. I messed up. I was willing to send them a ret return label and have them ship it back, but they just wanted the other mug in addition to this mug. So it all worked out. Um, I ended up selling this mug for $12. The buyer was all in for $18.47 and I got this at a garage sale for $1. The next item uh, came out of a mystery box. This is not something I would have sourced um, simply because the comps were low and usually people have these things priced, you know, at one to three, four bucks at garage sales because they think they're worth more. Um, there were two of these in the mystery box. So I went ahead and decided to list it. And this one actually sold pretty quick. I think the other one is still listed. Um, so I got it in a mystery box, probably a dollar or less for this and sold it for $11 and 10 cents and the buyer paid shipping. So they were all in for $21.80. Um, it's St. Nicholas Square. Um, it's the sleigh ride, but St. Nicholas Square is, you know, there's the villages and all that stuff. I don't know where it was originally sold at. It looks like a Target or something box, but I can't say for sure. Here is another Ben's find. This was in one of my videos. It's the 1988 The Wizard of Oz, Glinda the Good Witch Wind Up Walkers. It's just a little plastic toy, but it is in the original packaging. When I saw this, I was pretty excited. I was like, wow, that's vintage. It's in the original packaging. I thought it was gonna comp out higher than it did, but very lightweight. I probably have 75 cents, maybe 50 cents in this based on weight. And I sold it for $11.10 plus shipping. So. Not a huge sale, but it sold pretty quick. The next item is this microphone. It is Fancy Nancy. Um, microphones are usually a hard pass, but some of them can do decent. Fancy Nancy is, um, it wasn't uh, as popular, I guess. So uh, wasn't mass produced. Like there's not a ton of Fancy Nancy toys. So people that are looking for it are looking for it. I got this um, in a Facebook marketplace lot of toys. So it wasn't something I sourced, but I did take the time to list it because of that. Uh, Facebook, uh, probably a dollar or so in this. And I took a best offer of 10. The buyer was all in for 1717. This is a little loving family dollhouse doll. She is the redhead and my leg is falling asleep. I do apologize. I got to change my leg position. Ah, okay. Um, but she's got the red hair and her hair's a little bit messy, 
but she is a little bit harder to find. So I went ahead and listed her. I love picking up Loving Family. Most of the time it is a bread and bread and butter, meaning, you know, 10, 15 bucks. But if you can source them for the right price, like typically I go out and I will get like a house with all of the figures and all of the toys that go with it. And I pay one price for all of it. And then I part it out to make more money. I sold this for a best offer of $9 and the buyer was all in for $15.34. The next item is this vintage Cabbage Patch Kids posable redhead figure. Again, it seems like the redheads do well, right? Um, this is a major bread and butter. This came out of a mystery toy box that I purchased from Auctions for You on YouTube. And the box was awesome. I bought two separate vintage boxes, toy boxes from her that were um, just random toys, old toys, things I had to look up, things I had never listed. I learned so much from those videos. Definitely go check them out. Again, I pop up those screen shares to show you how I listed everything. I ended up taking a best offer of six on this one and the buyer was all in for $11. And another good thing, I didn't do it in this one, and I typically do, I think I ran out of room, is put cake topper in the title. The next item is this Easter egg table. Uh, it's a tree table, a centerpiece for like a party or, and it says for Easter eggs. So I got this at a garage sale for $1. It sold super fast for $18.50 and the buyer was all in for $27.55. The next item also came out of a thrift store mystery box and I thought like some kid made this literally and I flipped it over and to my surprise, let me find it here for you guys. It had this stamped on it and I used Google uh, Lens and I couldn't really read the bottom, but I ended up figuring it out with Google Lens. I listed this and it sold for $21, I'm sorry, $21.50. The buyer was all in for $37.56 for this guy. And if you search eBay, you will see there are quite a few of these and a lot of them have sold. But I mean, look at the, it looks like somebody just carved it real quick and it's all sloppy and yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's a thing. Huels, H-E-W-E-L-L-S, Pottery, Terracotta, Jack-O-Lantern, Pumpkin. And it is signed. I'm not sure if I pronounced the, the name right. All right. So the Connects. Uh, this was a uh, Screaming Serpent roller coaster that I parted out. And I did end up putting the blue and the gray connectors together. And I sold these for $16.28. The buyer was all in for $27.84. Um, I have done this exact playset two times and it is a lot of work parting it out does it pay off yeah in the long run but it is definitely long tail is it worth it i it's a lot of time but it ends up adding up to a lot of money but you do have to be patient you have to find the person that is looking for these parts the next item is this vintage easter eggs press <laughs> eggs press um Press Out Easter Train from 1985. Super cute little book here. This is what it looks like. Uh, another item that sold really quick. Uh, I got it at a garage sale for a buck and it sold for $14.80. The buyer was all in for $22.07. The next item is this Nero Smith Pet Me Platypus. Um, it's a duck, a musical duck. It lights up. It's a stuffed toy and it's, I want to say it's, either vintage or majorly retired. And I ended up getting uh, $25.90 for this. The buyer was all in for $39.47 and I got that at a garage sale for 50 cents. Uh, just something about it. I was like, I just think I can sell this. I didn't know anything about it and it was cheap. So I just went ahead and tried it. Here is, uh, I'd never heard of the brand, Nero Smith. All right, the next item is this vintage necklace with white multi agate stones. It's knotted and it's a really interesting piece. And I actually got two of these. And I want to say this same person offered me, made me an offer on the other one, but it was lower and I did not take it. And I probably should have taken it now that I look back. Do you guys ever do that where you're like, mm, I'm just going to wait. And then you wait and you're like, I should have took it. I think I should have took it. 
I got this at an estate sale for two dollars. The buyer uh, best offer twenty two on that one. Buyer all in for thirty one thirty five. This is a Nerf ammo. Um, it's like a container that holds the ammo for a Nerf gun. And this came out of a thrift store mystery box, and there was not much in that mystery box. Um, a lot of Nerf stuff, and most of it was big and bulky, and I didn't want to mess with it. So I was like, I'm just going to list this to try to make some money back. And it ended up selling really quickly to my surprise. It sold for $20 and 72 cents. And the buyer was all in for 37 08. This is a vintage. Is it Fleer or Fleur? I'm not sure. It's F L E E R. They are trading cards. This one is Casper the ghost. So I bought a whole bunch of these at a garage sale and it has been a while ago. I think I have them priced too high. Uh, and I need to go in and edit and I just haven't done it. So they're just sitting in my store, but I ended up parting them out. I was hoping that they were going to do better than they have. And there's other, other trading cards as well. But anyway, I think I paid $5 for all of the cards. So I made my money back. I doubled my money with one card and I still have probably, I don't know, 30 cards listed. So I'm going to do okay. I just probably need to go in and lower prices. So I sold this for $12 best offer and the buyer was all in for $17.65, which is a lot for a trading card. The next item are these vintage Miss Days Ideal Baby Crib Shoes, size one, original box, leather. Got these. I can't remember where I got these. This is an older listing. Um, I've had it for a while. Very long tail. I ended up selling it for $13.31 plus shipping. Usually stuff like that I pay like a buck or two for. All right. This guy is not loving family. He is play school and they are marked a little bit differently. Let me see if I can find you the marking. They look very, very similar to the loving family dolls. They do well at also. So I always pick these up. It's right here on his belt buckle or his belt, not his buckle. Um, and a lot of times these are going to have little imperfections like the top of his head is missing some paint. They will still sell. I sold this guy for $22.20. The buyer was all in for $29.77. And, um, you know, you can put yellow shirt, just be a little detailed. If you know the date, sometimes the dates on the bottom, I think that's with the loving family ones. But um, yeah, here, this one's loving family. So you can see they're very similar in size and everything. But this is the Fisher Price loving family, 1999 flower girl. And let me see. Right here on the bottom of her foot, it says 1999. Sold this one for 1702, and the buyer was all in for 2416. So these two are on the higher end of the loving family. They did pretty good. They were harder to find items. She's got this little flower bouquet. So what 22 for the play school? The play school is harder to find, and then 15 or 17 on this one. So those were good ones. Some of them are in the eight to ten dollar range. Vintage key top key. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's try that again. Vintage Ken toys, a brand I've never heard of. This was in a mystery box. I almost donated it. I'm not even sure why I listed it because it's just like a plastic pullback toy. Let me show you what it looks like here. Um, I was hoping I could zoom in for you. Usually I get a close up of the branding. There we go. Ken toys. 1998. And I just decided to list it because it was vintage and it actually ended up selling pretty quickly. Um, again, that one came out of a thrift store mystery box. I ended up selling it for 12 bucks. The buyer was all in for 1846. This here is a Coco Poodle Zelfs toy. Never seen anything like this. I was like, I Google lensed it and I found out that it glowed in the dark. So what I did is I did the side-by-side -side picture showing people that it glowed in the dark. I thought that was pretty cool. Again, tape measure to show measurements. I got this for 10 cents at a thrift store, sold it for $20, a best offer of 20. The buyer was all in for $26.50 on that. The next item are these vintage, uh, they're little miniature wooden ornaments. Super, super cute. I got them at a thrift store for a buck. Ended up selling them for $25 plus shipping. And the last item here is this vintage, uh, uh, I forget how to say it, Otagiri, Otagiri, O-T-A-G-I-R-I. Sorry, guys. 
Um, somebody mentioned that I should look up words I don't know before I do the video, but honestly, I probably wouldn't remember it by the time I actually did the video. Um, I can't visualize things, so I think that somehow incorporates into this issue I have with remembering how to pronounce things because I know you guys tell me all the time. You help me out in the comments and I appreciate it so much. Um, but it's just, I don't retain it. It's, I, I don't have very good retention. So I apologize for that. Um, doing the best I can, but I definitely do not have time to try to look up every word before a video. Um, I already spend so much time creating these videos and that would take me hours. And honestly, by the time I got to the word in the video, I would, I probably would have already forgot it to be honest. So, um, for those of you that hang out and put up with my pronunciation, I appreciate you. And I do know that it's probably kind of annoying sometimes. So I'm doing the best I can. And I thank you all for your patience. All right, you guys, that was 29 bread and butter bolos, items to be on the lookout for, items you can hopefully buy low and sell for a profit. Thank you again for being here. There's gonna be some videos popping up here and here and a subscribe button and hit that thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, tell me how you found the channel. And thanks for watching.